All police leave has been cancelled, and London is bracing for another violent summer. So, the Black Lives Matter movement has made it to Europe of all places, and with a very predictable outcome. Their ever-violent shenanigans have made their debut for the citizens of the UK's vibrant and diverse capital. Hyde Park turned into a war zone, with youths chanting, Black Lives Matter. An officer and two members of the public were knifed, and four other police officers were injured after a water fight and party in Hyde Park spiraled out of control in the city's worst bout of violence since the 2011 riots. The mob was driven back to the Marble Arch where around 500 remained until midnight, hurling bottles at the ranks of police and chanting, Black Lives Matter. A breakaway group stormed a nearby branch of McDonald's, causing terrified staff to flee downstairs as dozens leapt over the counters and pillaged the restaurant. It would seem that in England, like the US, many believe that squealing Black Lives Matter is a legitimate response to authorities whilst hordes of rioters are in the midst of organized violence, looting, and mass property damage. The narrative is spun that as in the US, Canada, Australia, France, Belgium, Italy, Spain, the Netherlands, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Portugal, Greece, Germany, Luxembourg, San Marino, and Monaco, literally everywhere that has white majorities, blacks are ruthlessly and systematically discriminated against, tormented and murdered without consequence by a racist white majority. Well, okay, the US had the horrific institution of black chattel slavery within their borders. This is why you find blacks in large numbers in the US. But Germany did not. France did not. Sweden did not. The Netherlands did not. And the UK did not. Almost every single black person you see today in Europe left their ancestral lands and arrived in Europe by choice, or their parents did, in the hopes of living a better life in the countries built by Europeans. They arrived by choice. Nobody forced them to come and they were allowed to settle. To preempt the aspersions of collective guilt that are usually thrown upon white America, yes, the British allowed slavery within their empire until the early 19th century, but chattel slavery was outlawed in Great Britain since at least the 13th century, if not earlier. The British viewed slavery with disdain and felt themselves above the institution, and while allowing it in the colonies on their home islands, there were laws that stated that any slave that set foot on the shores of Great Britain were by law and right free men. Slavery was not recognized as lawful, often on the basis of pronouncements such as those attributed to Lord Mansfield that the air of England is too pure for any slave to breathe, necessitating that those in bonds must be freed before or after coming to the home islands. As early as 1706, in the case of Smith v. Brown and Cooper, Sir John Holt, Lord Chief Justice of England, ruled that as soon as a Negro comes into England, he becomes free. One may be a serf in England, but not a slave. Moreover, from at least the time of the Magna Carta of 1215, it was recognized that all persons had a basic right to liberty in Great Britain. So to make it absolutely clear, Britain never had an entrenched culture of chattel slavery within its borders. Slavery has existed in all human societies, in ancient Egypt, Greece, and Rome. Aztec, Mayan, and American Indians, Africans sold other Africans to Arabs, Europeans, and each other. The Chinese also had slavery. In the Islamic world, slavery is condoned and sanctioned by Allah in the Quran, and the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad, bought and sold human beings. This might be why it has been so difficult to rid the lands of Islam of slavery, because both the deity worshipped, Allah, condone the practice, and his apostle Muhammad, who is to be emulated, was a slave trader. In fact, in 1953, sheikhs from Qatar attending the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II included slaves in their retinues, and they did so again on another visit five years later. Saudi Arabia had an estimated 300,000 slaves when it was forced by the West to abolish slavery in the 1960s, but unofficially, it continues to exist. While the Arab slave trade typically dealt in the sale of castrated male slaves, there are a few blacks that survive in the Middle East to this day, and they are still viewed and referred to as slaves.
فينظر الى الانسان الاسود انه اقل قيمه واقل اهميه وكانه حملا متروكا لا احد يعيره اي اهتمام يعني ها عبد ها اسود لا احترام ماكو تقدير ماكو اللي عاده تطلق تجاهك من البيض دائما عبيد بعد يعني اكثر الهشاي الماشيه سو... وانا هسه بالقرى السايق كل ما شويه صار صار حكي بيني وبينهم راسا قال ها امشي انت كلك عبد One civilization put an end to human slavery in their own society. One civilization put an end to slavery globally through pressure, force, and war. One civilization manumitted the slaves of the world. Led by the British, the West went on to globally outlaw the slave trade and ended in the bloodbath of the U.S. Civil War. Western people fought and died to rid the world of the plague of slavery. No other civilization did this, not one. All resisted until they were forced, coaxed, or pressured to give up slavery by the West. That's why it's so ironic that slavery, which was smashed by the West, is used as a measure of endless collective guilt against the descendants of people who were the first in human history to not only end slavery in their own societies, but forced all other civilizations to do so as well. The blacks in London, who are looting, destroying property, and stabbing police, use the call of Black Lives Matter to justify their lawlessness in a land that they or their parents chose to come to, and I might add were graciously allowed to settle in. The entire premise of the Black Lives Matter movement in the U.S. is to highlight the killings of blacks at the hands of police, whether criminal or not, but the fact that blacks in the U.K. now seem to think that their lives are under threat from a malicious police force is even more ludicrous than the chance of Black Lives Matter. Quick fact here, in the first 24 days of 2015, police in the U.S. fatally shot more people than police in England and Wales combined over the past 24 years. There is no police war on black lives in the U.K., full stop. Blacks over the past few decades have arrived in Europe and the UK specifically in large numbers wanting a better life for themselves and with millions more in Africa and the Caribbean dreaming of the chance to live in Europe and the UK. And while obviously there have been ups and downs, they have been greeted with opportunity, social welfare, education and state-funded health care. In very real and concrete terms, Europeans have shown that they believe that black lives matter. But none of this matters, of course, to those that chant Black Lives Matter. It would appear that the Black Lives Matter movement, or people who are just co-opting their battle cry, are doing in London exactly what they are doing in the U.S., spreading violence and division. The racial grievance industry is being imported into Europe and into countries that were, just a few decades ago, monolithic in their homogeneity. Movements such as Black Lives Matter are not going to help make relations between natives and newcomers any better, but will no doubt increase friction between the different groups that now call the UK home and will help unravel the cohesion of any community they come into contact with. Please consider subscribing to this channel. It will be updated regularly.